Ask you. All right, it's good. Let's slide down, have your roller nearby, take your feet on the roller, and we're gonna take some bridging. Let your feet go on the roller and we'll take with some bridging. And your feet pull up. Good morning, everybody. Come on in and we'll start with bridging. That way when you get there, you can start waking up your back and your legs. Now you're breathing is with your movement. So you're exhaling as you push, you're inhaling as you come down, and you can just notice how does your body feel today? How do your knees feel, your ankles? How does your mind feel? And then let everything just be in the present moment. When you're focusing on the breath, you're in the present moment because there's no past breath or future breath, you're right here. So you're just gonna let your mind have this opportunity to, as you move, focus on the present. Now the next time that your hips are lifted, you can just notice if they're even and make any adjustments and then hold the even hips in a bridge for 10, nine, 11, eight, seven, neck is soft, Five, you can see what other muscles can you let go of. Four, that you don't need. Three, two, now take an inhale. Now as you exhale, lower your spine down like you're putting down a beautiful necklace and then hold on to your feet and let's take happy baby. Five, four, three, two, now let your feet go down on the roller, curl your spine up, and then if you want to add on, you can put your right ankle on top of your left thigh, like a figure four, drop your hips and lift with that figure four 10 times. Now you could still make sure you're just exhaling as you lift, inhaling as you lower. I like to add that knee opening up a little bit extra towards the top, it'll feel like you're um, hip gets a, a, an extra stretch, seven, or a deeper stretch, eight, nine, and then try to stay up with that one stretch, hold that one foot, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, lower down, put your right foot on the roller or the floor, whichever you're doing, put your left ankle on your right thigh, lift up with this one figure four stretch, this one foot on the roller or the floor, and we're doing 10, so this is at your own pace. Exhale, neck is soft, eight, nine. Now when you're at the top of your 10th one, hold there, open up that thigh, you're gonna feel a stretch and you're gonna feel work in the right glute. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, inhale, and then exhale, lower down, and then take a happy baby with your feet in your hands, and just take a, note, a moment to open up whatever toes tend to be tight on you. Five, four, three, two, and then let the feet back down on the roller if you can, on the floor if you need to, curl up, now it's either here or you can lift up your right leg and we're gonna wake up the hamstring and the ankles, lower your foot and lift it towards the front of the room and then towards the sky, point, the knee stays long on that leg, three, you can feel there's a hamstring stretch, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now lower that foot, lift up your other leg, and we're gonna do this leg pull. And work your foot, work your ankle, work your toes. Um, and by work, I just mean like really point, really flex, spread the toes, they're open individually. You can feel your arches getting some attention. We're gonna keep those feet as healthy as we can. We're giving them attention. Eight, 
So they give us attention when we're balancing, when we're trying to keep our trampolines of our feet healthy. Left foot on the mat or the bear on the um, roller. Now you're in a bridge. Curl your spine down. And then lift up your right leg. This time your knee is long or whatever gives you a good hamstring stretch. Now either stay here or if you can, lift up your shoulders. And if you want to add on, lift up your left leg. And if you want to add on, reach higher on that foot. Okay, so you have all sorts of options. 10, let's get that hamstring a little bit stretched. Eight, because we warmed it up. Seven, six, five, and your abs are of course. Four, three, two. All right, we're gonna take your other leg. Now the option was a hamstring stretch, uh, other leg up, a lift higher your shoulder blades off the mat, and a hold on higher of your foot. So you might be a little different than the person next to you, it's okay. And feel this hamstring stretch though. That's what we wanted to do with that warmed up muscle movement we just did. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, take another inhale. And then exhale. Relax your feet towards your pelvis. Let your knees go wide. Inner thigh stretching. This is like a bound angle or I often call it butterfly. You can rock here. You can let your elbows push your thighs here. Doesn't that feel nice? Five. I feel a release around the sacrum and around the inner thighs. Also feel it around the outer hips and also in the toes because I've got a couple of them. I'm pressing my pinky toe out here. Five, so just see what you feel. Just notice. Two. And then one. Now the next exercise is gonna be legs longer. So push your knees out long. You have ankles or calves on the bar, I'm sorry, the roller. Lift up your booty and lower. Exhale, lift. Now what I'm really, keep going, what I'm really doing here is making sure my knees don't get backwards locked. So you know if your knees tend to hyperextend and keep doing the lift, I'm just gonna do some cues. You exhale and you lift, and inhale, you lower softly. You're not just crashing to the floor. Exhale, so I really have to soften my knees before I lift, and that makes the hamstrings really active. I don't want the knee to be bending backwards and push now try to hold these up for a 10 count so lift and hold 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 lower okay we're going to do it again with a slower lower lift up 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 slowly lower and then again lift 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, lower. Terrific. Now we're going to add on. Walk the roller back in. You're in a bridge. This is going to be a little pulse. So lift up your hips. Now once you're up, everything's in neutral, meaning your knees are over your heels. We're going to do baby lifts. 10, 9, pulses. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, now leave your feet where they are, put your knees together. And then baby, there you go, do little pulses. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now open the knees just a little wider than your, yep, and just a little bit. Now do 10, a little two, pulse. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now neutral, lower your spine down. Take your right ankle to your left thigh, reach your hands through the window, and stretch out that hip. Again, you might roll around right or left. You might grab a pillow for your head. You might move your ankle and your toes. Spread them out, spread them out, spread them out. Also relax your jaw, your eyes, relax your throat. These stretches are great opportunities to scan your body 
and without judgment, just like you're a friendly observer of yourself, a friendly witness of yourself, just notice where do I hold tension? Uh, what other sensations in my body does that tension generate? And then can I let it pass with a exhale, with a conscious awareness? So let's just see, are you tighter today? How does it feel today? Where are you tight? And then just notice with a little exhale, you can start letting go of some tension, some layers of tension. All right, let's take an inhale. And on the exhale, let's take the other side, ankle to thigh, reach your hands through the window, and then you might rock. You might spread the toes. You might roll the ankle. You know what's tight on you as you start gently paying attention. You're a friendly witness to yourself. Your face is soft. Your hips are starting to open. You notice your shoulders can soften. You notice your exhales can let go of tension in the eyes, the scalp, the mind. Four. Love it. You can feel different angles that really feel good on you. Three. Two. Feels so good. Let those hips relax. Now, we're going to put the legs like there's a table underneath our calves, fingertips behind your head. You're going to lift your right shoulder to your left knee. Now, take your left shoulder to your right knee. Take your right shoulder to your left knee. Your left shoulder to your right knee. Now, add the exhale as you come up each time. You can inhale and then exhale. Now, pull your toes back. And exhale, look at the belly as you switch your side, and you can tell it's pulling in. And then we'll speed it up a little bit. 10 with the toes pointed. Flex for 10. Point for another 10. and flex for another 10. And then hug your legs in, one hand per knee, stir the pot with your knees, move them around in little circles or big circles. Move them around in bigger circles the other way. And then just hug your legs and point and flex the foot, point and flex the foot, or feet, point and flex the feet, point and flex the feet. Nice. And lift up the right leg towards a long hamstring stretch. Take the left leg out to about 45 degrees. Lift up your shoulder blades. Looks familiar, right? And then switch your legs. Now switch your legs. Now switch your legs. Exhale every time. Now, can you pull your toes back for 10, 9, and 8, and 7, and 6, and 5, and 4, and 3, and 2. Now, do a set of points for 4, 4, 3, 2, and flex for 4, 4, 3, 2, rest. Hands to your feet, knees wide, bound angle like you're a butterfly. Add a little rock right and left. Five. You can even pull your feet up higher if you want towards your sternum. Four. Three. Two. And then one. Both legs come up towards the sky. Draw a circle with your legs in the air. Now keep going. I'm going to double my mat. 
on this one. So if you need to do that, you can. But basically your legs are up, you draw a circle, and then you go the other way. Your knees are pretty glued together. Your legs are pretty glued together. If you make it bigger, it is harder to keep the ribs on the mat. So you might play around with how big you can make this. Eight more. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One and hug. Okay, hug those legs, rock it a little. Now the leg circles, left leg down on the ground, right leg really up tall. Now you're gonna draw a circle with the leg. 10, nine, now the bigger the circle, the harder it is to keep the ribs down. And of course, when you're done with 10 one way, go 10 the other way. Your head could be on a pillow if you're having any trouble at all keeping your ribs connected to the mat. Hug the leg in the air and just make it a good chance to stretch even more in the hamstring. Point and flex that same leg, that same foot, excuse me, 10. Really spread out the toes. Really pour the left leg down. Or you can hug your knee into your belly, whatever. I was offering a hamstring stretch, but you can do whatever. You know what you need. As long as something's getting stretched. And then right leg comes down. Take the left leg up. Okay, you've got one leg down, one leg up. Draw circles. Breathing continuously, not holding our breath, in other words. Ten the other way. Hug that leg up. And then you're going to point and flex, point and flex. Point and flex. Pour the right leg down. And hold. Got this great stretch in the muscle, not the knee, not the uh, sit bone. While you're here, take both legs really wide like a big V. You got it, nice. Open up and enjoy and feel your inner thighs. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then one. All right, we're going to go into a roll-up possibility. So let me show you a couple things that are modifications. One is you just take a crunch. That could be your place, but if you want to add on, the legs are long, the arms are long, you exhale up and over, and then you roll down. All right, keep going. I'm just going to take this one top off so you can see. Your option is that your arms are like a frame. Remember when you did that, Rick, yesterday? Go up and to a frame if you want it harder. Or you might just take a frame for part of the exercise because when you come up, the first 30 degrees are really hard. And you might say, I need to put my arms down on that one section and then put them up when you can. So right here is hard, harder. 
Go over imaginary beach ball. Roll down. And up. And over. Inhale. And exhale. Feel how it's like a stretch plus work. So it's a really nice feeling. I love these. Up. All right, now we are going to add a possible harder um, exercise. If you have to pull your pants out, you're doing it right because it does take your pants down. All right, hands like this, you're in a hinge. Now, as soon as you cannot hinge anymore, so I'm going, 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 and then my buddy's like, you need to flex. All right, inhale. This is hard too. So if you cannot keep your hands by your ears like little triangles, you're going to let the arms go forward for that little inch or two. You hinge. Nice, Marty. And then you roll. You exhale, press your legs to the floor like they're Velcro, like there's a canvas strap over your ankles and you've got it down to the floor. That's how Joseph Pilates did it originally, actually a little canvas rope under the ankle right there. Inhale and exhale up, over. Let's do two more of whatever you're doing. Even if it's just focusing on your breath, that's good for the nervous system. Exhale, over, lift. Hinge. Good. Keep going. And then flex. Good job. Full body stretch. Now, when you're in the full body stretch, shift one leg past the other. Nice. Cheryl, that's beautiful. One leg past the other. This is for your low back. It's a called a QL. It's really good for your low back to shift that. See if one leg is easier to shift past the other and give attention to the tight side and the low back and see if you can even it up. Okay. Now we're going to add on. Let's turn to the side. And if you want some water, this is a great chance. We've been working for at least 20 minutes. Elbow up. And we're gonna point the toes down towards the floor, the top toes, toes touch, lift up, toes touch. Good. Yeah, grab some more if you want. This is a good place to get it. We're upright. You're lifting four, four, uh, uh, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine. I like it. Now this one is an eight. It's like an infinity though. It's an eight on its side. So draw some of the eight ahead of your bottom leg and up. And make sure this bone is happy. I've got three uh, layers of mat to make sure. But if you have carpet, that's sort of a cushion, so you may not need it. Now we are going to take the toes backwards. So pull the toes back, go the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That hip is working. Nine, this is hip hip doctor. Okay, let's take a stretch. Mine was tired and burning. Take that leg in front. It's like a little passive stretch. Get your bottom leg. And um, you remember how we lifted up and down over an imaginary, one of those beautiful big cupcakes. Up, up, up. And now I want you to feel your waist. It's working. Your belly pulls in. But notice if your neck tightens and you don't need it to. Notice if your eyes tighten and you don't need them to. What muscles can you let go of? Now pull your toes back up over that imaginary cupcake. Nice. Now um, we're going to start pointing the toe and make it an eight. It's going to be a, an eight on its side, like an infinity symbol. Keep that bottom knee long. Now you're also going to flex your foot and do it backwards. And then just notice your breathing. Can you breathe easier? Or are you accidentally holding your breath? Notice your neck, can it be easier? Or are you accidentally holding tension? It's also good to find to use pillow if you need to. And inhale. And all right, let's go into both legs being long. Can you lift up and down? Feel your waist up and down. Legs lift. Four, five, six, seven, eight, 
of it. Nice. Do 10 more. If you put your hand on your belly, it's working. Neck is soft. Try to control the way down. Five more. Okay, we are going to the other side. Here we go. Now, everything's over here. All right, prop yourself up. You can always double if you need to step grab it. Okay, there is a slight pitch forward and you're gonna take those toes towards the floor, the top toes, and you lift up and over a big cupcake. Good. How strong everybody looks. Yeah. There's some work happening in the waist here as you stay up and the shoulder blades get lower. And toes back. So keep going. Just notice your bottom shoulder blades. You're going to make sure you don't thrust forward, right? You're going to make sure your shoulder's down the back. Now on this next one, we're going to take our toes into a point and make it an eight. That's on its side. Breathe. Calmly inhale and exhale. At the end of the 10, pull your toes back, go backwards. Now it's starting to burn on that hip. Your waist is pulling up. Your face is soft. Good lift, Rick. Good Betty, good Cheryl. And then let's go down on this arm. And you've got this top leg, now it's getting a stretch. It's just out of the way. Bottom leg up and down over a big cupcake. Feel your waist pull in. Feel your neck soft. Feel your inner thigh getting strong. Pull your toes back and now you're gonna do the same kind of lift over a cupcake. Belly in, face soft. See if you can lift a little higher than you think you can, maybe a half an inch higher. Now add a point and do a circle, sorry, it's not a circle, it's an eight, so it's two circles. It's an infinity, knee long. Pull your toes back, go the other way. I like it. Okay, both legs go long. Feel your waist work here. Lift up both legs. Two, three, four. Again. Really like it. All right, we're going to lie on our belly. And again, before you go down, if you need a sip, grab it. Now keep your roller handy, but at this point, just take your swan without your roller so your hands hover. Now when they hover, you're just maybe a few inches off the ground. Enjoy that. Five, that's your back getting stronger so that we don't get rounded forward shoulders, so we don't get rounded upper back posture. So our bone has some density, our bone has some strength, our, our spine, the neck is getting strong, that way we don't get forward head syndrome. Now as you're ready, the next time you're up without your hands, notice just keep some energy on your back body so your arms don't just take over, they don't just slam you to the top. You're helping with your arms as you go up. Now hold. Find a place where you can pull your elbows towards the floor, where you pull your belly up. That looks great. Notice how that feels in your upper back. This is an area where when people don't do anything about it, they start looking rounded and by the hammer of Thor, we're not gonna be that. So hold here, five, four, three, Two, and just notice how it makes you feel. To have that upright posture, so a little more confidence, a little more upright, a little more enthusiasm. So this is also affecting the hormones. 
of mood. Exhale, lower down. Now when you're down, let your legs come up behind you. Lift up your glutes. That's gonna build glute strength, which is so good for your back and also, of course, looks good. Lower down, lift up your upper back. Let your hands press you up. So good for the back. Exhale, lower down, and then lift up your legs. You're gonna feel your glutes fire. A lot of people get gluteal dysfunction when you sit a lot. So we are always gonna be strengthening our glutes in class somehow. Lift up your booty and now lift up your torso. Now let your hands assist you. Feel your belly pull up. Exhale, lower. Lift up your legs. Feel your hamstrings and your glutes. Lower your legs, lift up your torso. Let your hands assist you. See if it feels a little easier now to get there. And legs. And torso. Good. I'm just letting you go at your own pace. So that's why I'm not cueing too much on where you are. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, show that looks great. And legs. Now the upper body and hold. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Lower down that beautiful back. Let's take a child's pose. Press your hips back. And any kind of child's pose you need. If you need the uh, booty in the air like a puppy dog pose, you can. Otherwise, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one, spread out your hands. Downward facing dog is an upside down V. Five, four, three, two, Take another inhale, bend right, bend left, bend right, bend left, and right and left. That calf is the densest muscle per square inch. So we are just taking care of some stretching in there. Both heels lift and lower at the same time. Feels so good. And then just hold your down dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana, five, four, three, two. Shift that weight. Now you're in a plank, so if you wanna to go to your forearms, go for it. I'm going to hold this plank and feel how strong your core is. Get, get a, a sense of a achievement or how good that is to have a strong core. Shoulder blades are flat on the back. How you have strong shoulder blade stabilizers is gonna help the shoulder. Your ears in line with the shoulder, the head's not dropping forward. That's gonna help with preventing forward head syndrome. Feel your belly pull up, feel your legs energized. Five, four, three, two, and we're going to go to the other side, it's plank. Now I'm gonna move my mat under me because I really like extra cushion. Come up and hold your side plank. I want you to feel like you're in a toaster slot or a bagel slot. It's like you're up against a wall. And you're just holding it stable. Your bottom arm is strong. Your bottom hip is lifted. Your head's against a wall. Your top shoulder blades against that same wall. Now, as you transition, keep your core muscles active. The other elbow comes down, the other arm comes up, and hold your body against an imaginary wall. Your hips are lifted. Your ribs tuck a little. Your pubic bone pulls up a little. Five more. Four more. Three more. Two more. Take another inhale. And as you exhale, both arms come down. Stay with me if you can. Now we're gonna add a little extra to this if you can. Make it spicy, lift up your hips like a dolphin. Come down to plank, lift up your hips. Make it a plank, lift up your hips back and make it a plank. So a little bit of spice here. 
five, four, three, you're doing great. Two, if you're listening to your body, one more. Go back to plank, hang it. Five, four, three, two, rest your pelvis. Now this is called Sphinx, you did great. If you'd like to add on, go back to your swan or cobra. Shoulder blades are down the back, I love it. Hold, feel your belly pull up. So you're not just hanging out in your low back or your shoulders aren't by your ears, you're active. Five, four, three, two. Lower yourself down. Now, just take your knees like a little, um, in 90 degrees, just let them bend right and left. Now, can we take the legs long, leave your pelvis stable as you lift the left leg up, 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 like you're a grasshopper. Lower, lift your right leg up, 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 like a grasshopper, and lower. So do this alternate leg lift. And the reason I paused on that first one is because sometimes we get in the habit of just like throwing the leg up and not really noticing. I want you to notice what are you feeling as you do these. I want you to feel that inner hamstring, which doesn't normally kick in as much as the outer. So feel that inner hamstring. Notice if you can get higher than your brain originally thought you could if you just give it a little conscious effort. The front hip stretches so the back of the thigh can contract uh, more, uh, allow that hip to go higher. Now your pelvis is stable. You've got a piece of ice underneath your abs. If you'd like to add on, reach your arms kind of like a Y. Hover your top ribs above the mat. Lift your left arm and your right leg in opposition, right arm and left leg. This is the posterior oblique sling, which is uh, important for back care. Of course, your spine is getting some help in, in uh, extension, which is important to prevent rounded upper back, rounded shoulders. Now we're going to add on, if you would like, lift your arms and your legs and lift those arms and legs in a diagonal pattern, but you're not letting them rest on the floor. Neck is soft. There's no tension there. Lift your upper back a hair more if you can. Inhaling. And exhaling, do you feel your inner hamstrings? You feel the glutes, feel the back in a healthy way, feel the muscles below the shoulder blades. And let's take it back to a child's pose. Curl the toes under so that your feet get a stretch unless you're suffering from metatarsalgia or some other bone issue or foot issue I don't know about. But if your feet are healthy and they just need a stretch, pull the toes under. Five, four, three, two, and then come to a hands and knees. And in hands and knees, you're gonna do a cat and a cow. If you tend towards lordosis, if anyone has ever said, oh, you have kind of a gymnast back or you do a little extra too much low back uh, sway, which is really easy as a female, just right off the bat. So you wanna put on the brakes before you, right here, you don't wanna let that low back go to its full extension. Kind of like if you hyperextend your elbows, you don't want them to go into your, to your body's ability. Hypermobility is a setup for injury. So we really want to learn how to be stable in those joints. Soft elbow, it's not about how flexible you are if your joints are hypermobile. Now to add on, curl your toes, lift up your knees, and then round and lift and round and lift. Now you're building strength around the shoulder blade stabilizers. You're still building strength around the abs and the quads. Inhale and roll up, four, back and forth. Three, really round. Two, the back of plant is keep your knees down. And then rest your knees, good. Now extend your uh, feet off the floor. Do you see how all the toes are off the floor? They're not touching. And if you need to make that better on your knees for safe for joint comfort, you can double up your mat. Lift up your right arm and your left leg, leaving your right toes off the floor. And uh, Ellen, push your ribs up a little. You see how they're kind of dropping like that? Yeah, push your ribs up. There you go. Elbow to knee. Now stretch out, but don't let that left leg go way up here. It's not about how high that leg can go. It's about keeping your back neutral. Round your elbow to your knee, extend. Round your elbow to your knee. Your right toes and your right shin are totally off the ground. 
Move your head as well, unless that makes you dizzy, to challenge your vestibular system to find balance, which it'll do with your abs and your back muscles called the multifidus, which is going to help your spine. Two more. Belly pulls in. Now we're going to switch it up. Your right hand's down, your left knee's down, your right leg's back, your left arm's up, and lift your ribs a little. Make sure they're not dropping. Now exhale, round and extend. Good. That back leg is not lifting any higher than your pelvis. So if you can see yourself in your video, that right leg is even. It's not up here. Four. Good. Let your head round with your elbow. Five. Six. It's going to be more challenging. Seven. I'm going to look at you more. Eight. I love it, guys. Nine. Now both hands and knees come down. That was really good. Lift up your left leg and leave it like a 90 degree. Take your right hand to your foot if you would like and push it up. Otherwise, just balance. Lift up, hold. Keep pushing, 10. Keep lifting, nine. Good, Karen. Eight. Seven, feel that shoulder open. Good, Jean. Six. Nice, Betty. Five. Four. Three, like the strings attached to your toes. Two. Take the other one. Now lift up your right leg. Take your left hand to your foot if you're adding that on. Otherwise, just leave it up in balance. Good, Karen. Push. Your left toes are on the floor at this point. Good. Lift. You're doing great. Yep. Eight. Lift up. Seven. Six. Good. Five. Breathe. Four. See how the breath can help. Three. Two. And lower. Now one child's pose. Let's do the knee wide one. Put your belly right down the middle. Five, four, three, two. And then let's, uh, if you need to adjust your mat, do. I'm also going to have us do um, a sip. So if you need a sip, grab it. So maybe by the end of class, you've had about six ounces. That would be great. Six to eight. Forearms on. Plank, hold, possible add-on. Tilt your left hip down a little, then tilt your right hip. We call it funky plank. It's gonna just be here, leave you a little rotation. Otherwise, if this doesn't serve you, stay normal in plank. Eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Now turn if you need more side cushion, take care of it. Plank with a tree. So right here, I'm gonna put my foot up to a inner thigh, but you could also do calf or you could just leave it plank. Here we go, guys. Hold it still. 10, nine, heads against a wall. Eight, seven, that was good, Marty. Six, that was a good adjustment. Five, four, three, two, now we're going to go to the other side with that same little foot on the inner thigh or the calf. Go up. 10, head back. Yep, there you go, Marty. Nine, eight, good. Seven, Betty, six. Good, Christina. Five, four, three, two. See how strong you are. And one, good, let's go back, other side plank, possibly take your elbow to your knee. This is a harder one, so if this is not for you, just stick with your tree or your normal side plank. If you're doing this, the arms over, the top leg is going to pull, one, to the knee, the elbow to the knee, two, I used to, uh, my brother and I used to try to make the truckers pull their horn, it's like that with your arm, four, when we were little, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, good Karen. 10, now we're gonna lower to the other side. That was great. Some obliques. Here we go, arm over your ear. Lift up, elbow to knee, one. 10 times, two, whenever you're ready. Three, good. Seven, eight, 
10. I love it. All right, come on back to the other side. Elbow on the floor. Now go up. We're going to possibly add on five star leg lifts. So it's going to be up. Please just do what you need to if that's not for you. Lift the top leg five times in a long extension like a star. Two. Three. Four. See how easy it is for the bottom hip to drop. Stay strong. Now lower. The bottom hip is tempted to drop when your conscious mind goes to the cue of the top leg because your brain usually can only hold on to one new cue. So really keep your bottom hip lifted. So go to plank. Notice where your bottom hip is. Here we go. Keep that bottom hip the same as you lift your top leg. And two. Keep your bottom hip lifted. Three. That's it. Four. And five. I like it. Now come back to your belly downs. And if you need a sip, grab it. Give yourself a little pat on the back because we've done a lot. <coughs> belly down, legs long. And if your hands will interlace today, let them do that behind your back. If you feel too tight, just put them beside your hips. Lift up your back. I'm gonna have an interlaced position. Lift up your legs and breathe. When you inhale, this naturally notice you go up. I love this one. That's why I do it so frequently because it opens the front body, it strengthens the back body. And that's the secret sauce to keeping good posture. Lower down, switch your hands. Let's go up, inhale, breathe. See how good that feels? Relax, either do that again or hold on to your ankles or your feet and go up, bow pose. Breathe. Love it. Next soft. Relax, we're gonna do it again. Up. And relax. Child pose. This child's pose, walk your fingers over to one side. Walk over until you feel your lat stretch. Open up your armpit and you're going to feel like a clam looking at the sky. Just feel a different stretch. And walk it over. Breathing. Clam shell it. And then gently come back. So I am going to offer a squat stretch. If this is not for you, I don't know why I've been craving this so much for, for our groups, but I'm going to go with my intuition. If you do not like this one and you need to do a baby, happy baby, you could do that. But this squat is like a little bit of an external rotation. So your knees are in line with your toes. You see that you have an arch here. You never want to, this is not a squat. You don't not, you, you want to make sure you don't collapse. You want to make sure you have a little arch lift. One trick is push through the mound of your big toe, 
lift up all your toes and that's going to create a posterior tibialis lift in this arch. Then lower your feet. And I know I've said this before, but like I've always sort of had flat feet. And um, so this, the fact that I can lift up. So if you know you've had flat feet too, but you can lift up and there's a little, little bit of strength in that arch. It feels nice if you were born with flat feet, like, oh, I've got some muscle tone there. Then lower your feet and try to preserve that arch. Like there's about four corners, quarters stacked underneath there. Place your hands together, push that down. That way, if you've been having any trouble with your feet or your ankles, or you just don't want to, this is one way to give them attention. So you notice I try to sprinkle in the feet most classes because a lot of people don't do anything about their feet till it's kind of too, uh, not too late, but till it's far gone. I want us to be ahead of the game. So you've got the palm stretch so that if you play any sports or hobbies that grip, you're getting that. You've got this inner thigh stretch. You've got your low back stretch. You've got your ankles. You've got your feet. This is such a heavy hitter. Five, and this one, as you see, is a diminishing skill set without use. A lot of people don't squat and then they lose the ability, but we're going to keep our ability. Three, two, and we'll just add a little fun here, just a negotiating power. We'll just open up that hip, take another inhale. Just kind of, yeah, just press your choice, how, how far you go. Good. And then go the other side and just push that out to a comfortable place, negotiating cowgirl. Sometimes you feel your low back get a little longer, opening up that hip. That girl. And right down the middle should feel pretty nice. Palms down again. Five. Four. Feel that hand stretch. Three. Ah. All right, watch this. The booty's really close. There. <laughs> Not far to fall. Come on down. Exhale, go low. Relax your body. If you would like a pillow, that's fine. Just otherwise, just enjoy. Just kind of shake out any tension, let it go. And good. No, that's it. And 10. Now let your mind have a chance to stop. You know how it gets so busy sometimes during our day and then the mind gets addicted to those uh, hormones of a feeling of busyness and distraction from the true self. So this is a great chance to let your mind have that gift of the present moment by just focusing on the breath. You can focus on where you can let go of tension without judgment. This is a friendly witness to the self. Notice the precious gift of the breath linking us to the present. Notice where the breath travels. Eyes are closed if you can. Breathing through the nose if you can. If either of those cues don't serve you, just do the best you can. Keep the mind gently focused on the breath. If it wanders, just bring it back. Now, as you're ready, gently come up and then have a seat with a crisscross applesauce or whatever's comfortable. Go into an open inhale, exhale, rotate, and then wherever your hands land is fine. Probably left hand, right knee, and right hand behind your back. Soften your eyes or close them. Those are cues to help you get in your parasympathetic system. You're rotating your upper back. I'm looking at you because I want to see you, but you can keep looking over your shoulder. Hands are down. It's like you're wringing out a wash rag. Notice how the exhales just release a little bit of tension each time and how easy and free you feel without that tension. Inhale to open up the arms and come back to center. Cross your feet the other way if you can. If that just drives your ankles crazy or your hips crazy, just stay the other way. 
Otherwise, inhale, or you can double up your mat like I did on that ankle. And exhale, hands down. Lift up with your inhale, eyes are closed or soft. Exhale, micro-rotate in the upper back. Can you let any more tension go in the jaw? The lips might even separate. The neck might even relax more. Inhale, facing the front of the room. And then this is a bound angle, just a gentle forward fold. Let your mind go. Just let this be a, a counter pose to what we've done. Three breaths here. Slowly bring the spine back up into neutral and find a comfortable sitting position. In yoga, it's called Sukhasana, which means easy posture. So whatever is easy for you. Now let your mind soften into the breath. It's as if the breath is breathing you. If you would like a mudra, you can put your thumb on your first finger and just feel that the other part of your hand is open in a state of receptivity, in a state of agape, which is total love, uh, big love, large love. So let your inhale come in through your nose. And if you're stopped up or have a deviated septum, just breathe in your mouth. Just do whatever you need to do. Eyes closed. And let your friendly witness observe where the breath goes. And let your exhale release tension. You're giving yourself a chance to be in the present moment by focusing on the breath, you cannot be in the past or the future because the breath is happening right now. Give yourself this present moment, this gift. Be a friendly witness to the breath. If you notice judgment or shame or anything coming up that doesn't serve you, come back to the breath. And notice how it feels to be in touch with that part of you that's beyond meaning, that's beyond identifiers, that's beyond solving problems. To just have that sense of peace. Connecting with that sense of peace, bring your hands to your heart. And it's as if you have a beautiful stone from a mesa in the hot hands hollow that has the word peace inscripted on it, a sandstone, light orange, with the word peace on it, so that you have a tactile reminder that when you want to come back to a state of inner calm, you can place your hands at your heart over your little sandstone rock from your imagination. Feel that sense of peace. Connect to the breath, which is our link to the present moment where you make a connection with that part of you that is deeper than the mind's activity. And let that be your intention for today. I know that you can come back to that state of homeostasis whenever you need it, that state of peace. And whenever you're ready, so it is. May you have a beautiful day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, guys. You did great. You did great. You did great. Thank you guys so much. Adore you.